had basset hounds all your life when you were a kid, you're probably going to lean towards a basset hound. And you will get whatever basset hounds bring with them. When you research breeds, one of the things that I think is very important, and I'm, I'm very comfortable asking people questions. So if I wanted to know more about the style of your shawl, I would ask you, is that current? Where did she get that? Does it come in many sizes? Does she enjoy it? Is it comfortable? Because you're more objective. So if you're thinking about buying a beagle, go to somebody who breeds goldens and say, what do you know about the beagle breed? What do they do? What are they going to be like? What diseases are found in them? I'll repeat that. What diseases are found in them? Does anyone here know what inbreeding is? Good. Did you know at the turn of the 19th century, all the royal families in Europe were all cousins and cousins and cousins and cousins, and most of them were hemophiliacs because that's inbreeding. So to produce really gorgeous German short-haired pointers or English Springer Spaniels or Beagles or whatever, for show dogs, you have to do a lot of inbreeding to the line the breeder before you buy. So I'm a breeder and we sell all over North America. We will not ship a puppy. You come to me or you don't get one. And the people that automatically get past the word go are people said, that say, do you think we could visit your home before the litter is born and just see the adults? Yes, you can do that. Because you're obviously now dealing with someone who wants to see what the adults like. Maybe in, in our case, there's often four or five of them there. Or they come to one of our events, like our fall walk or our winter walk or our big summer barbecue, where there might be 20, 30, 40 of our breed there, plus some other tag-ons. So they get to see a whole bunch of adults. And that really demonstrates that those people are proactive. The other kind of people we really enjoy talking to are ones that say, okay, you've got a litter that you just sent home in January. I'm retiring in September of 2018. Can you put me on your list for the first litter you have after 2018 September? And you know you don't have to ask them, who's gonna care for the puppy for the first six months of its life? They know they're getting into a puppy. They're almost as much work as a little one. Not quite. But you know those people know what they're going to do to take care of that puppy. Understand the history of the breed. Our first dog we bought, we purchased because it was one of the very best hypoallergenic dogs. These are dogs that have hair, not fur. Our son sneezes and his eyes water if you say the word dog. So we got a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Anybody know what that is? Great. She was the ugliest Wheaton, but by God, was she ever good at agility, rally, obedience. My wife adored her. Sure enough, we got her in early 95, 2000. We did her annual checkup. There was protein in her urine. Protein wasting disease is a disease that's found in a certain segment of Wheatons. And we had bought from a breeder up near Acton, Ontario. And we knew they were very good breeders. And in all the time we had Molly, these breeders would often bring us younger dogs to live with us because my wife's so good at training and we would socialize those dogs and they would live with our Molly and they would live in our routine. So the breeder really respected my wife. The moment they learned that our dog had protein wasting disease, they neutered the father, they spayed the mother. And they said, would you like another one? Would you be willing to foster one for us? So Anne said, okay. They were ethical breeders. They didn't mean buy another one. They meant, would you like another one? 
and bringing Emma home actually invigorated Molly for her next six, eight months and uh, filled a hole that we knew was gonna be dug when Molly made the transition. And that breeder, they were professional breeders. They, they bred nothing but soft-coated wheat and terriers. They didn't have litters all the time, but they would probably have four to six litters a year out of a huge stable of dogs. And they didn't all live on this big property. They had males that lived with them and they had a female that was fostered over there. And, and so they were able to bring these dogs in at the time that they wanted them. So that's the kind of breeder you want to deal with. And I repeat, and I asked Ann the other day, what did we pay for Molly? Neither of us can remember. But it was a wonderful experience. We learned some very lovely lessons. When we lost Molly, my wife started researching rare breeds. Every breed has something medical that can go astray. So we bought a breed, we got into a breed where the disease is progressive retinal atrophy. Your retinas gradually break down around year five, six, seven, eight, nine. The worst it can be is blindness. There was a blood test for it in Germany. So we decided to get one of these little devils and we've had them for 15 and a half years. The couple in the front row here just bought a puppy from our last litter, our 15th litter from six females. And we breed for temperament and structure. We really don't like showing dogs. It's kind of like if you take a rare dog to a CKC show, it's like taking the nicest Toyota you could ever get and putting it in a show with General Motors, Pontiacs, Chryslers, and Fords. The judge might say, well, that's okay, that's the nice one of that breed, but the judge isn't gonna put your Toyota up above the other cars because he doesn't know them. And that's very common with rare breeds. Only after you've researched what breed you might want, what you know about the breed. So we'll, we'll go back to you. Well, let's pretend you say, well, I think I want a beagle. Okay, you have a dog? Okay, I want a beagle. So go to somebody over here on Breeders Row who raises German short-haired pointers or German shepherds or Irish wolfhounds or bulldogs and talk to the breeder and say, what do you know about the breed beagles? Please be objective. They're gonna be dog people, if they're breeders, they're gonna be dog people. If you, if you came up to me and the opinions I express are not those of management, you said, I l and someone said to me, I love Bernese mountain dogs, heart disease, die young. I love black labs, cancer, die young. I love goldens cancer and heart disease, die young. That's just the way it is. And I don't know why, it's, a, it's genetics. So breeders know what other breeds are susceptible to. And when we sell our puppies, we have an extensive health guarantee. And the reason we do that is because we're ethical, because it takes a lot of work to find a client, but it takes a hell of a lot more work to win clients if you've kind of jerked people around. So before you got to do all this work before you pick a dog. Now you can visit a breeder and ask the breeder, can I visit when you don't have puppies? Because I don't care if you had your heart set on a beagle and you went and saw Golden Lab and the puppies were seven weeks old, the first words out of your mouth would be, oh God, aren't they cute? And if you're buying them off the back of a truck and the guy says, I have two left, do you want them? Yeah, they're so cute, my wife will be delighted or my daughter will be delighted. Puppy dog sale, puppy dog sale. Visit the breeder when there are no puppies there. And ask some questions like this. And I'll leave it to you people to figure out what the answers mean. How many litters per year do you have? 
How many do you have on your waiting list and how long is it? And is your waiting list for sequential births or timed births like I mentioned before? How many females and males are in your stable to produce those litters? What's the price? What's the deposit? When is it due? And what are the selection processes involved in getting your puppy? What are the total health guarantees and the timing? Do you have references? And can you visit before the dog whelps? And can you visit how soon after the puppies are born? When you're visiting a breeder's location, it's only natural. It's like visiting a place of business that you've never been before. You look around. Beware if the breeder is not breeding in their home or in a nice, clean, warm kennel. Beware of a breeder that has multiple litters all the time. Or a breeder that breeds A dogs, B dogs, C dogs, and F dogs. That's not a breeder that's gonna focus on one breed. Beware if the breeder offers you no health records. I'm not suggesting that CKC registered means they're gonna be healthy and not get a disease or not get a tick bite or not die some other way, but CKC registration to a greater degree validates the breeder. Beware of a breeder who will let a puppy go before eight and a half weeks. And a lot of ordinary pet people don't understand why. Our puppies are born, nobody visits until week three. When you come to the door, you take your shoes off because we don't know where you've been walking and we don't want kennel cough or whatever. You come down, you clean your hands with the alcohol stuff. Week four and five are wonderful. Those are such cute puppies. Week, the fifth week and the sixth week, those are piranha puppies. They have their milk teeth in. They're very nippy, bitey, and they, they screech and scream a lot because they're biting each other's ears and piece, you know, each other. They're not really hurting each other. They're not really fighting. They're learning what's called some level of socialization, but most importantly, bite inhibition. So if you get a puppy, or you meet someone who got a puppy, well, how old was it when you got it? And they say, five and a half weeks. Oh, good for you. You are dealing with an unethical breeder. Now, we like to stand out from the crowd. You don't get our puppies to at least nine and a half, ten and a half weeks. And the reason we do that is we're really big into socializing. And socializing doesn't mean social. It means letting the dog experience carpeting, tile, stairs, grass, lawnmower noises, vacuums, ding dong, noises, people. When we lived in a suburb, I would get the kids on the street to come in. Come on kids, we got puppies. Who wants to play with puppies? I'd almost pay them because they're helping me with my puppies. They're socializing them. The puppies are gonna be handled by kids. Again, you gotta be informed about your breeder. All right, I'll ask Luke and Alita here. You got your puppy from us. In the first 13 months, if your puppy's never sick, how many times are you gonna visit a veterinarian? Five. Because it's got an eight week shots from us, 12 week, 16 week, Six months later, you do rabies. You never let a vet immunize for double things at the same time. Never, 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 never. Or if you do, it invalidates my health guarantee. It invalidates it. So that's 12, 16. Oh, it's on our contract. Within 72 hours of taking my puppy, you must see your vet, have your vet go over it, look at the results from the blood work we did and that validates you, the new owner, that it seems to be healthy, 
and it helps us to know that the vet has seen this thing for the first time ever because most vets have never seen my breed and then you see them again at 13 months because we're hoping you'll do an annual checkup it was only in the annual checkup that we found molly's protein urine and a vet cost in downtown toronto well it isn't 60 bucks you know 75 85 95 dollars and, and, and there's a big cost there. So you have to discuss with people what the price of the dog is going to be. Because getting a good puppy is not cheap. Because you're going to buy more toys than we supply. The crate we give you with our puppies is not going to be big enough by month eight or nine. You're going to have to get a bigger crate. And crate training a puppy is phenomenally good for them. Last thing you want to ask breeders is what startup materials do you supply? and why. And if you're really smart, you can't do it with our breed so very much. You visit two breeders and you compare their responses. You might just take a personal social likeness to this breeder, you like them, well then buy from them. But the more information you have, the better off you're gonna be. Any question about Picking a breeder. Anything? No? Okay. Now, how do we select clients? It's kind of the same thing. We get phone calls all the time. We get emails. Uh, we get uh, messages from our website. We have a puppy questionnaire built into our website and it's a document we can send them as an electronic file. Uh, you ask them a great deal about how many dogs are in your background? What breeds did you have? How old were they when they passed away? Have you ever euthanized a dog? Put it down. What are the conditions that would dictate that you euthanize a dog? You're learning a little bit about them. And that's important. We make informed decisions. We have only ever rehomed two puppies, two dogs. One, it was at about age five or six or seven, that marriage had broken up, that young boy was now at a boarding school, the father was now traveling for a living, and they were kenneling the dog, and they felt awful, and we found a wonderful home with a woman in Windsor. The other dog was a fantastic boy and he was maybe two or three and he lived with us for a couple of months and we put some weight on him and then he went home and he was having some issues and then the owners were in a car accident and so the lady was in a walker the husband had ruined his shoulder and they just couldn't take care of Ferguson again but I think Ferguson was one of the prettiest boys we've ever produced lo and behold he went to the same lady in Windsor and she's very, very happy. We ask people expectations of care and feeding. If you were lucky enough to sit here when Dr. Greenway was chatting, I mean, I sat there and I just kind of smiled and listened to him talking about one cup of food or half a cup of food or don't feed a dog and then feed it more. I mean, dogs are opportunists. That comes from being a wolf. So if you put down three cups of food and it's used to one cup of food, it's going to think, oh, and it likes that food, it'll eat it. And it might vomit, it might be constipated for a day, but it'll eat it. Because they're opportunists, that's built into their genetics. Wolves don't eat a hearty meal every day. It does not hurt to let your dog not eat. So if your dog's got raging diarrhea, don't feed it or give it some plain yogurt with plain white rice, no salt. Maybe some chicken broth, if it's okay with chicken, or beef broth, or vegetable broth, or water. That's only just so it doesn't suffer hunger. Rice and yogurt's not gonna offer a lot of calories, but it's gonna keep things moving. Nothing wrong with letting a dog go hungry. Won't hurt them. It's part of their genetics. We ask a lot of questions about people's lifestyle. Now, we've been at our booth for three days now, and people ask if they can pick their own puppy. And we made the decision 
I buy about maybe, I don't know, litter five, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. No, we're gonna be right up front. The moment we make contact with clients, no. My wife picks who's going where. And I'm not the dog person my wife is. She's phenomenally observant with dogs, phenomenally capable. She's not a good communicator with humans, but she's phenomenal. And she's got her hands on those puppies from birth onwards. And she knows which puppies are outgoing and confident and which ones take a little bit of time and confidence to jump out of the whelping box and which ones seem to go to the litter end of the whelping box first and learn right away which ones are the bounciest because of course I remember when you visited week something or other they were all bouncing around you and then slowly bing 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 but there would be one of them that always went to sleep last so that gives us an idea about temperament we ask people's lifestyle you're going to jog every day. Who's going to take care of the puppy for the first six or eight months? Because if a puppy's four months old, you can allow for four plus one, five hours that a puppy can hold its urine. And being that our puppies are crate trained, you're not putting them in the crate to punish them. The crate is their safe, wonderful spot. And they can stay in the crate. If the crate's not too big, they won't mess in their crate. But a three month old puppy, four hours. A seven month old puppy, well, you're getting up to eight. But it's not really until 10, 11, 12, 13 months that they can go an eight hour day. And even if you work eight hours, you're gone from the house more than eight hours. We will not sell to anybody that doesn't have arrangements in place to take care of our puppy during the day. And it's not just to take it out. A puppy needs more exercise. It's good for them. It doesn't need to run. We would not sell you a puppy if you had every intention of running it from day one. Not good for their skeleton. So we want to know an awful lot about you. And I think if you have a breeder that's asking you questions about that, you're dealing with a breeder that probably knows what they're doing. In addition to Anne handling the puppies, we had eight last time, and she virtually knew who was going where, but she doesn't tell me, because I'm mouthy. We do temperament testing with a professional at six and a half weeks. We do more temperament testing in a different room with a different professional at seven and a half weeks. So it's nice in the summer, we do the first testing inside and the second in the grass, or vice versa. At eight weeks, we go to a structural professional and have the dogs all assessed for how well they're put together. And, and the litter we just produced is probably the nicest litter we've ever produced for both structure and temperament. We'd love to have shown some of those dogs, but structure and temperament is what we breed for. So I know darn well when I say, and our, our litters are all A, B, C, D. So this was the old litter. And my, cu my customers here, we can't bring to mind all the eight names, but I can come up with the eight names the owners give them. But Anne was pretty sure that this little girl, Olivia, was going to Los Angeles. She was pretty sure that Otto was going to Luca and Alito. Olga, she was a tiny little thing. Our puppies usually weighed 220 to 275 grams at birth. Olga weighed 150 grams and didn't lose any grams. And she would fight to get into the best milk part of the, the mother. So that's why Ann named her Olga, because she was driven. She was a drivey dog. She would have been perfect for frisbees or fly ball or uh, any of those things. Very drivey. She'd be great for agility. Another thing that's really important because now that we've been producing litters for 12, 13 years, I always ask, how did you learn of us? How did you learn of the breed? What do you think of the breed? And still I ask, have you ever seen an adult? And if they say no, I start sending them 
pictures of our girls and our puppies in other situations. We ask, what sex do you want and why? In our breed, the Dutch Sheepdog, the Schapendos, people think the girls are going to be wussy and the boys are going to be a little bit more aggressive, assertive. It is the opposite in our breed. The boys are kind of wussy and the girls are dominant. We become informed, that's what we do. And we've been very, very fortunate to have some really good clients all over North America. Probably I should summarize the main message I'm putting out there is become informed. Ask questions. Don't visit puppies before you're virtually ready because you'll make the same mistake 75% of the people out there make, which is, oh, isn't that cute? I'll take that one. Oh, and I'll take this one too. And a breeder that's willing to sell you two puppies from the same litter, run. No two puppies from the same litter should go to the same house because they will bond with each other and not bond with you. Anyways, I thank you for your attention. Does anyone have any questions? Luke, when would you like your second puppy? <laughs> for those that stayed, thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the show. Bye now.